he says it goes on, I think it's going to lighten up. He's a tough man, J.B. Robinson. He made his debut back in 2012. Well, he's dropped by a left foot from Danny Ball. That's his money punch. Five, six, seven, eight. Kirsten, the there. He is. He is a tough man, and he is back up to his feet. How hurt is he? And will Danny Ball start to go through the gears here? Robinson just looks a little unsteady, catches another left hook high, and Danny Ball just starting to really turn through these shots. Long time in the round to go as well. Strickling up that left hook to the body. Robinson firing back at him. Brilliant stuff in the second round. It started slow, but it's firing up here. There's Danny Ball, left hook on the top of the temple. Robinson wobbling, referee having a look at him, lasers in with the right hand, and there's blood pouring from the nose. Still thrown though, isn't he? What a round, what a response from Robinson. He's trying his best, but this is brilliant stuff from Danny Ball. Beautiful left hook to start this. He's not took his foot off the gas, really letting the shots go. Jamie Robinson is in hell right now. He's trying to weather the storm. Will Danny Ball punch himself out of here? He's put an awful lot into the last 60 seconds. How a shot can just change the course of a fight. Just swings in with the right there. Robinson counters to the body. Really digging in here. He's holding his shape, tucking up, trying to find shots back. But he's reddened and bloodied as well from that long exchange on the ropes. Yeah, when he lands one, Robinson forward just move his feet out of range he's never really been hit with two consecutive shots ball he's been smart with the feet and the flip side Robinson he needs to go again when he mounts an attack he needs to bring his feet in and let the shots go but it's just been such a controlled performance from Danny Ball nice little angle change there by Ball Looking for that counter uppercut miss, but found the left hook under the elbow. Blood starting to run from the nose of Robinson again. Just tucks up tight, looks for a double counter left hook to the body. Landed both really nicely, but again, Ball just stays where he is, holds his feet, and poses himself towards the end of the round. Eight in the books then. They pull Jamie Robinson from the fight. Danny Ball celebrates. Runs to his corner, and I think on balance, probably the right decision. It, it was going no other way than probably a point slot. Yeah. And Jamie Robinson lives to fight another day. We were asking the question, wasn't we? What, what does Jamie Robinson have to do? And, and if so, how is he going to do it? Um, I'm not sure if there's been an injury or it is the corner stand that you're way behind on the scorecards. We can't see a way you're going to win, but you know. at the same time and I think he's hurt here 45 seconds on the clock standing count as he gets to his feet and Eon a breakthrough against the run of play and Diaz hang on here and weather the storm caught out of nowhere and he's in big big trouble here Eon blows up on the Right hands on the left hooks, and again, Fiaz just sinks into the ropes. Referee ruling it a push down. Incredible stuff. Out of absolutely nowhere. He's still under pressure here. He's got to try and tie up Eon. Well, this is where you find out what fighters are made of in moments of unforeseen crisis. And Aki Fiaz is in a big one now. Eon letting the shots go. Everything he has. And so, wow. so nearly, he got it done. He's doing the right thing, Fiaz, just making this a bit messy, untidy, just running down the clock, pushing off here and again. Can he walk him onto a right hand? Can he on find the left hook? 20 plus seconds to go. Been a brilliant contest. Well, and Eon has done everything in his power in these last couple of rounds to finish the job. And Fiaz has done everything in his power to buy time, to box sensibly, to fight back when he can. In his final moments, further jeopardy for Fiaz, or can he see the final bell? He does so, and he will win the fight wide. But my word, wasn't he close? Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds of action here in Manchester, we go to referee John Latham's scorecard.
it reads 76 to 75 for your winner. He's still undefeated, Akeem Fiaz. Yeah, beautiful shot, shot, nice right hand as well. As she jumps in, Harper's hand, the lead hand was low and she picked that shot, more of an arm shot from Harper, but hit the target. Another scoring shot, a little bit scrappy in these closing seconds. And outside of these scrappy exchanges, the cleanest shots once again in this final round being landed by Terry Harper as we come to the final few seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action here in Manchester, we go to the judges' score totals. Jose Ignacio Martinez, 98 to 92. Howard Foster and Victor Simon both scored about 97 to 93. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. And still, the WBA Super Welterweight Champion of the World, Terry. Delta Harper. Again, beautiful jab at the start of the seventh round from Catrell. Again, just creeping to his right. Finding the opening, just moving that right foot across and piercing the jab through the guard of Foley, who's still applying pressure, like you said, Cole. That inactivity, will it take its toll down the stretch for Catrell? I think they'll be hoping it will. Team Foley. He looks fine at the minute, Catrell. Switched on sharp. Oh, nice left hand. Beautiful try. And again. Bit naughty that the second left cross went in when, when Foley had already touched down and stood up. Howard Foster may have a word here. Yeah, Catrell's been guilty of that in the past as well. So that from Howard Foster has negated the effect of the knockdown in terms of the scoring. One point deducted. Just a couple of rounds to go then, as Dara Foley once again gets on the front foot. And Eddie Hearn was describing this as an unofficial eliminator. Staggering number of jabs thrown by Jack Catterall. Foley turns away once again, and the referee says no, it wasn't low. And now Catterall can build on that once again. Oh, oh what a brilliant shot. finish from Jack Catterall to that combination, and bravely Foley gets to his feet. Well, he sensed that Foley was hurt there. Referee Howard Foster not having the low blow, and Catterall just took advantage. With some clean, accurate shots. And still two minutes to go in the round. Foley now, a man who's never been stopped in 10 years in the professional ranks, in big danger now. This is beautiful work from Catrell, putting his hands together with real speed and spite. Foley trying to cover up, trying to take the sting out of the shots. Oh, beautiful work, the changing of the levels. The jab upstairs, the left to the body. That's just Foley there getting rough and frustrated and thinking to himself, you know what, I'm under the cosh, so I'm going to do what I need to do to stay in this fight. Still got plenty of time left in this round. For Catrell to land some more accurate, solid blows, and I think he can potentially close the show. Foley pushing Catrell back, trying to land the shots of his own. He was hurt for sure. Yeah, really, game. There's no quitting Foley, that's for sure. Well, based in Australia, but says he bleeds green and he's certainly got the Irish fighting spirit. Absolutely. 
taps on his waistband there as if to say another one straight low. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action here in Manchester, we go to the judges' score totals. Steve Gray, 99-88. Jose Ignacio Martinez, 98-89. Victor Simon, 97 to 90. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. And the new WBA Intercontinental Super Lightweight Champion, Jack Elgato. Davison very content in the corner, keeping it calm and composed. Nice counter right hand from Lara. As he attempted to throw the jab to the body, Wood. He's been quick on his feet, Wood. He has to do that this time in the, the first fight, though he boxed really, really well. He did stand in the pocket. He held his feet far too often, and that allowed Lara to land big body shots. Big left hook! From Laura, but a push puts Laura down. Well, Lee Wood actually got caught with a shot there, and he was a little bit, I don't know if he was hurt or a little bit shaken, and then it was, the feet came together. It was a bit of a balance thing. But Laura falling down there, I think, did Lee a favour. But Laura just poised, waiting for that opportunity as Wood gets to work behind the left jab. That's a really stiff jab there that he's thrown as, as Lara walks forward, just timed him nicely. There's no urgency about Lara, he's really confident and composed and almost nonchalant in there, just sitting there waiting, as you say, Mike, poised, looking for that counter. And I think Lee Wood doesn't want to get lured into a false sense of security, he needs to stay sharp behind that jab, he needs to get behind that shoulder, almost Mayweather-esque, just be concentrating for every second of every round. Yeah, exactly that. Carl, it's not even round by round, it's second by second. It has to remain switched on. Oh, right up a couple of by left hook. Good work by Lee Wood. Lara clearly waiting to time Wood when Wood opens up. You get the sense that Lara's not in any rush at all. He's confident that if and when he lands a shot. He's seen the effects of it in the last one. I think he's just coming into the ring this time with that confidence. And Lee Wood will be thinking about what happened in that last fight where, where the left hook just wiped him out. So, real flip side of mentalities in this. Lee's just going to stay focused. Good body shot there. But Very close. Close counter, up, up, wasn't he? Yeah, close counter features there. Just, just losing past the chin. I mean, the blueprint's there from the first fight for Lee Wood, though he couldn't say, oh, right up a guy, puts Lara down. That's a great shot there from Lee Wood, clean up the cut on the chin of Lara, sitting there just waiting for it. Tremendous, all the talk about the power of Mauricio Lara, and it's the Mexican dumped onto the seat of his trunks with 20 seconds less to go in the second round. And the Forest fans here in the Manchester Arena singing the Nottingham Forest anthem, Mull of Kintyre. Talk from Lee Wood, heading towards the final minute of the final round. Taking his opportunities, Lee Wood, and allowing Lara precious few opportunities to respond. Yep, it's been textbook from Lee Wood, switched on, focused, disciplined. Worked so well behind the jab, head and body, the feints, he's controlled the distance so well. And that minor adjustment, he's kept that right hand up. And he must know he's not far off, 30 seconds away, because you've got that inbuilt body clock as a professional, 30 seconds away from, from retaining or getting back, grabbing back that world title belt that he lost so devastatingly in the first one. This has just been simply a clinical performance from Lee Wood. And there's nothing Laura can do about it. Because Lee Wood's waiting for him for that counter. And the crowd rise to salute this performance from Lee Wood in the closing seconds of the 12th and final round. He came here as the second favourite. Many feared he would face the same ending as last time around. But he's produced a 
technically flawless performance. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action here in Manchester, England, we go to the judges' scorecards. Howard Foster and Victor Simon both scored about 118 to 109. Jose Ignacio Martinez, 116 to 111. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. And the new Dynamite Champion of the World, Victor Simon. So he's done it, champion for the second time.